Hello everybody and welcome to another one of those videos where I talk about updates in the Steam version of Dwarf Fortress coming from Toady1 and Kit Fox. Now this is a little video that I've wanted to put together for quite some time now, kind of covering uh, the vanilla workshops versus what the Steam workshops look like, kind of doing a little bit of a side-by-side -side here, and uh, also adding some more flavor. Some of you might remember Tarn put out a very big video uh, roughly a month ago covering... A fortress that Zack has been working on in the Steam version tile set, and uh, this is just kind of going through with uh, a couple of the screenshots from that video. Now, keep in mind, I am working with YouTube compression here, so not all of the screenshots are the most clear. Apologies for that. First off, I just wanted to real quick shout out my seven volunteers, the dwarves that bravely fought off not only a honey badger, but also a zombified wild boar uh, in order to make this video possible and constructing these lovely workshops. So shout outs to Besmir, Burr, Ass, Esmil, Etor, Zephron, English, our seven dwarves strike the earth. So the most important first question is, uh, can you tell which one is steam and which one is vanilla? Man. The resemblance is uncanny, <laughs> but uh, jokes aside, uh, on the left we have the Steam version, and on the right we have Vanilla Classic, so this is a completely vanilla install, I just downloaded the game from the website and just extracted, and ran the game as is, made it full screen, and just took some screenshots. So the first thing we have here is the Fisheries Workshop. So as you can see on the left, in the Steam version, there is a lovely big fish in the middle, as well as some hacked up bits and pieces of fish, and a little grate down in the bottom, kind of where the blood can just like seep off. I don't know where it's actually going, I guess there's some sort of imaginary like drainage system in here. I kind of think it's just spilling out on the floor if you're asking me. But uh, over on the right, you can clearly see that that is a workshop in vanilla with a icon of a fish on it, thus obviously implying that it is a fisheries workshop where fish are cut up. Uh, I, honestly, I think that this is a very clear looking workshop. I kind of wish that there was a little bit more implication of what is actually being done here. This is, you know, where fish are prepared, obviously. I'm wondering if that fish will change based on the type of fish that they last cut up, maybe the job that's queued up, I have no idea, uh, but personally I think that it is a relatively clear, nice looking little workshop. I also would like to highlight something that you're going to notice a little bit more on the Steam version, is you'll actually see that the tiled floor on the bottom is at an angle, whereas all of the other floor tiles are at a different angle, kind of making them stand out a little bit more. I really quite like that. I'm also curious to see how they change from based on what material they're made out of. The one on the right is made out of mudstone, so it's that kind of, uh, kind of brownish, ugly, like, kind of poop color. Um, whereas, if it were to be made out of a different type of stone, it would be a different color. Anyways, on to the next one. So this next one we have here is the Farmer's Workshop. Once again, same format, Steam version on the left, vanilla on the right. As you can see, they're completely indistinguishable, so I have to make sure that you know the difference. Uh, oh, uh, but this is the Farmer's Workshop. Now, the Farmer's Workshop, as far as vanilla goes, in my opinion, is one of the more distinguishable ones. You have a, a very distinct spots that kind of point out exactly what the different options are. As you can actually see, there's quite a resemblance between the two. You can clearly see the, the hay, the straw that is in the top right of the workshop. You can see the table kind of in the middle the uh, jug where uh, milking gets done on the uh, kind of top left, uh, and then you have the table for the uh, the shearing of sheep and spinning of wool. Uh, at this shop, you're also going to be processing plants that are harvested into uh, threads, which are then turned into fabrics. It's a very important shop for Dwarf Fortress, and one of the more beautiful ones, in my opinion. It's, it's one of the main things that keeps Long Death, my thousand-year fortress, alive, and it's a very, very, very important fortress uh, staple, and every good fortress needs one. I mean, how else are you going to make those pigtail socks? It, it's, uh, I really like the way this looks in the Steam version. I think it looks beautiful, and of course the classic one is the classic one, and it will never get old. I mean, because it was when it was first made. Anyway, on to the next one. Now this next one here is a very, very, very important workshop. Now you're going to hear, be hearing that a lot because they're all very important. But this is a very important workshop. This is the Trap Makers Workshop. Uh, well, actually, it's the Mechanics Workshop. But it's se selected with the letter T on the keyboard, meaning it's really just the Trap Makers Workshop, am I right? Anyway, so the Mechanics Workshop is where me mechanisms are made. It's a very simple workshop. It does one thing. It makes me mechanisms out of uh, several materials. Now, what the this workshop is for is you make levers, and you can attach those levers to things. So supports, you can attach attach them to bridges, you can make uh, traps out of them, uh, you can attach them to floodgates, to, mech to, um, scr to, to screw pumps, uh, essentially, so that they, uh, they, they, they stop pumping water when you want them to, and various other very, very important Dwarf Fortress tasks. 
Um, once again, it's a very recognizable workshop in vanilla already, but I think that the Steam version goes above and beyond to improve that, giving you the very clear big levers, as well as all the gears and the little wrench making it super clear, as well as the spikes, because those are one of the things that get attached to it, uh, as well as a boulder, because you can make drop rock fall traps there. It's a very important workshop, and once again, I just, I really quite like the rendition in vanilla. However, I'm not super fond of the way this one looks in the Steam version. I think it just looks a little silly, personally. Uh, I kind of wish it had a bit, uh, like, a more of a workshoppy feel to it instead of it just kind of being a pile of traps and levers kind of in a place like it feels like everything's already made and it doesn't really feel like anything's getting made i don't know what your guys thoughts are i think it works just fine like it'll work just fine in the game but it's certainly not my favorite of the ones that i'm looking at today so this next workshop that we're looking at here is the Clothers Workshop. Now, unlike the last one that we looked at, I really, really like this one. It's very clear what you're going to be looking at. You see all the little scissors, all the little tools on the table up in the top left, and all of the, the spools of, of cloth and all of the, the sewing materials and everything all over the place, the little shoes, the socks, the little pieces of cloth, and the, and the form, of course, uh, showing the beautiful shapeliness of, of a dwarf. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, of course, it's very recognizable in the vanilla version the clothes shop over on the right uh you can very clearly tell what you're going to be making because of course uh and then i, I need to stop doing the ironic like you'd know exactly what you're looking at because i realize most of the people watching this video have no idea what they're looking at in the vanilla version but at the same time I, I do think it is quite distinguishable in the vanilla version if you play the game quite a bit you do start to recognize these workshops at a glance but i i think that this uh workshop looks quite nice personally uh i like that it feels like more of a workshop unlike the last one that we talked about and i, I think it's going to be a lovely little addition to the Steam version. Up next, we have the Leather Worker Shop. So this is where stuff, uh, or, or where this is where stuff, yes. This is where uh, leather is brought, and then uh, that, that that leather, that those tanned hides that you got from the things that you hunted, like that honey badger I was trying to kill earlier, uh, is is then made into shoes and various other articles of clothing, leather armor, quivers, bags, and other things that you might need around the fortress. Uh, a very important workshop, once again, uh, as most of them are, but I, I once again really like how, the, like, kind of the workshoppy feeling of this one. Uh, it's one of my least favorite workshops in vanilla, just visually. It's so boring looking in vanilla, and I think in the Steam version, it has a lot of flavor to it. It looks like a little workshop. It looks like a place where the dwarves are going to be doing things and getting stuff done and working. I really quite like the little tables with the pieces laid out and the bits and pieces. I like the, the kind of way that stuff looks like it's been harvested. And I, I just, I love how complete it looks. This is one of my favorite workshops it, that's been shown from the Steam version so far. And I'm very, very fond of it. Now this next one here, I'm going to make the one on the right a little smaller because we know why we're actually here, right? Steam version? Yeah, okay. Just checking in advance. Anyway, uh, we have the Steam version and the vanilla version over on the right, as always. And uh, these are your kitchens. Uh, so by this point, my dwarves over on the right were actually getting a little kind of in trouble. They were, they'd gone into two fights with two creatures and they were kind of stressed out, but they were able to get these built quite quickly for us. We have our kitchen and our butcher shop on the far left, and then right in the middle we have our tanner's workshop where stuff is brought from the butcher shop and then turned into leather, and of course the still on the far right, the most important part of any good dwarven fortress. Now these are probably some workshops you're going to be seeing a whole lot. Uh, I think that the two on the left are a little bit tricky to kind of tell apart at a glance, at, at least if you don't know what they are. The one in the middle, the tan, because I actually don't know what the difference between the two of them, but I can't tell if that's the kitchen or the butcher shop, I'll be completely honest. And then in the middle, we have our tanner shop, which is very clear. We have our very obvious tanning spot. And then the still, which is lovely looking, quite frankly. Uh, I really like the way the like the little pile of barrels looks. I kind of love the way the keg looks. I think that whole thing looks very nice. I kind of wish that it looked a little bit more like a big distillery, you know, like kind of like with a big swooping kind of tank to it. But honestly, I think this looks very nice. Once again, where the heck is that stuff draining to? Is it just like draining to the floor below? Is it draining out into some mysterious like bag of holding? Like, where's it going? Um, I think that, again, these are all relatively clear looking and pretty easily quickly distinguishable, and they look like messy workshops, which which I'm quite fond of. Uh, once again, I think that these are going to be awesome additions to the Steam version and are significantly easier to tell apart to the un untrained eye, shall we say, than the original classic version. Now, the next one, I just want to shout out the size of that gem right in the middle of that screen. Can't you see it? It's like it's the it's bigger than most dwarves. Like that is 
huge. Anyway, I guess they're taking large gems to heart, hey? Uh, but once again, this is the gem cutter shop. So on the left, we have the steam version. On the right, we have the vanilla. I don't know why I keep saying that. Uh, this is going to be where gems are encrusted onto furniture, encrusted into uh, crafts and jewelry and various other things. And of course, just simply cut into the more valuable forms of rock. Now, these will be then sold to uh, humans or elves or, of course, hoarded in your basement until a dragon shows up to um, do what dragons do and be the local repo men and take it away from you. Now, these are beautiful looking. I, once again, I, I love how it looks like a workshop. It looks cluttered. It looks a little, not super messy, but just cluttered enough. I, what I want to know is, um, in, in Dwarf Fortress, if you let stuff stack up inside of a workshop, it'll actually give you the cluttered icon. I wonder if they're going to have like a different variation of the workshop when things get too cluttered. Uh, as always, if you have any feedback for any of these guys, just please leave them in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let's get on with the final thing, the forges! So, of course, the forges. Now, this one is very simple, so follow along. On the left, we have a glass furnace. A in the middle, we have a metal workers or metal smiths forge. And then on the right, we have a smelter. So the glass furnace is for taking sand and turning that into panes of glass and glass crafts and glass traps, etc. In the middle, we have the obvious. It's it's for smithing stuff out of metal. You know, we all know that. You make swords, you make uh, various other things, but the furniture, yada, yada. And then on the right, you take ore and smelt that ore down into bars. Now, this is one that I think is huge because over on the right on the Steam version, you can clearly see... Some of those look very similar, because they are. Several of these forges actually look identical uh, from forge to forge. The glassmakers and the metalsmiths look identical. Uh, so I think that this is, it once again, a huge improvement. Uh, you can pretty easily distinguish them in, in the vanilla version by simply checking, or just remembering where you put them, which is usually what I do. But even in fortresses that I've had running for a long time, I start to forget what is what and which is which, and where is where and what is what, and I have to like go back and check and like double make sure that things are the right thing. Um, Unless I'm just using manager and then I just I don't even pay attention to them to begin with so it doesn't really matter But still it's kind of a nice improvement to immediately be able to glance at things and just know what they are and this is gonna once again make learning the game a lot easier and more approachable for new players now Since we're kind of getting to the end of this video I just want to take a real second real quick second to thank Bay 12 games for all their hard work. Tyne Adams is moving this month, so move, m updates might be slow. I don't know. He's kind of stated on the Bay 12 games blog that uh, things are going to be kind of at a standstill for a little bit until he's done moving. Perfectly understandable. Not a good time to be moving, and, you know, moving in general sucks and slow down, slows down everybody's progress. So, in the meantime, if you would like to support the game, because I have seen a lot of people in the comments section saying that they want to throw their money at Bay 12, please do that. But you can do that via PayPal or through their Patreon, which can be found through their website. And of course, the link is down below directly through the Patreon at Bay 12 Games uh, or patreon.com slash Bay 12 Games or through the PayPal donation link, which is direct and they get a bigger cut. Now, if you enjoy these videos and you want to support me, I stream full-time over on twitch.tv slash blindirl, and you can find all of those VODs on this YouTube channel, as well as all the updates that I do about Dwarf Fortress on this YouTube channel. But I also want to mention that on the 3rd of June, which is my birthday, uh, I will be doing a charity stream for MSF, Doctors Without Borders. Uh, I do a charity stream every year. Last year, we raised money for JDRF, the Juvenile Diabetes Foundation. And this year, we are raising money for Doctors Without Borders. Uh, if you would like to take part in that, there will be more information in a video in the coming days. Thank you very much for hanging out. And thank you very much for watching these videos. If you want to support me directly, you can do that through my Patreon. Patreon.com slash B-L-I-N-D-I-R-L. You're all fantastic. And thanks for being an awesome community. And I will see you in the next one.